Hello and welcome to Caveman Bricks Builds and More. I am the Caveman and uh, this week I am reviewing and reacting to Harry Potter's Hogwarts Tournament of Houses Episode 3, The Wild Card Round that featured Gryffindor versus Slytherin. I've just finished watching it, uh, so this is going to be kind of my instant reaction to uh, everything. Um, did not get to be an audience on this one. Uh, as a matter of fact, so this one... If I remember correctly, this time Gryffindor and Slytherin had an 8 a.m. call. So they got there a little bit before 8 to start getting ready to record. And then we had a, I want to say noon, maybe it was one call. And, uh, and so for a great majority of the show, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw are outside the studio, um, waiting for this show to finish and we have no idea who's going to be in the final with us because literally this show is going to decide who's going to be in the final with us and I just remember um the Gryffindor um audience members coming out and literally just looking so dejected um and so we pretty much instantly knew that Gryffindor had lost um I knew that there had been some tough questions. I knew about the diadem question, um, being a Ravenclaw and having seen that diadem a lot, especially recently for whatever reason, I've seen it a lot. I knew which one was correct. I knew it was B because um, I knew you needed the bright blue top piece and then the circular and then the teardrop. And my understanding is when she actually explained which one was correct, Helen Mirren, um, she went into a lot of detail about why this one was correct versus this one and this one and this one. Um, and then they cut all that. Um, another interesting question um, was asked to Jillian of Team Slytherin, Team Slytherin, um, about what they found in Umbridge's office. Uh, and then the answer being uh, Mad-Eye's eye, um, which is actually in the door to her office, which I would think would still count as the office um, but one of the Gryffindor um, team members did not like that, I guess didn't like the way the question was worded and actually challenged that question and answer. And we, knowing that she had challenged that, were expecting that challenge to actually show up um, in the show. What was funny is um, we had actually had a similar situation, completely different, but similar situation in the Ravenclaw versus Slytherin episode in that the very first uh, question of the Golden Snitch round, um, the one that has caused all the controversy that I explained in my video last week about the train ride scene, um, when they first put up the first answer, Helen Mirren said, and Ravenclaw, you said, order the Phoenix. And all three Ravenclaw team members immediately said, no, we didn't. And so they had to stop the show and actually figure it out. And then they figured out, oh, no, Slytherin had said that. Ravenclaw said Half-Blood Prince. And then they were able to kind of get it sorted out. But it wasn't an official challenge. But they did say, no, we did not say that and had to get it fixed. Um, so this is an official challenge that she – I say she. I My understanding is it was the young one, the 15-year-old, that issued the challenge. Probably the whole team was in on it, um, but that was my understanding. Um, and so um, when she issued the challenge, she said it's not in his her office. The eye is in the door, not in the office. So she can't he can't find it in Umbridge's office. Um, and so that was a big deal. Um, I'm really surprised that none of that made the show. They completely cut it completely. Um, another interesting thing, since we're talking about Umbridge, is... I cannot believe somebody said that Umbridge is their favorite character. I am in several Harry Potter fan groups. I've been around for a while. Um, I know in my own family, she's by far the most hated character. I know that a lot of people outside of Harry Potter consider her one of the most evil characters ever written. Um, not because she's necessarily evil, but because she represents someone that could be very well real. And, and a lot of us can relate to someone that we know that kind of embodies that character that can be a real person. Um, so I've never heard anyone say that that's their favorite character. 
Um, so that was a huge surprise. I did find out later um, from one of my friends that was at the show with me that he does do a cosplay of Umbridge. Uh, so definitely check that out if you can find him on social media. Um, I, another little tidbit about him too is I believe he said that he went to Oxford just so he could dress up as Snape and walk around with a big willing cape because that's what they wear at Oxford. Um, so really cool guy. Lots of interesting things, um, but no one on bridge. Um, let's see, what else? Um, this episode, the questions I felt like were um, difficult. Um, by far the most difficult that we've seen to this point. Um, but there was also a lot of struggling. Um, for the Golden Snitch from Gryffindor's house to only get three right and Slytherin's house to only get four right, that's a pretty big blow. Um, I mean, Gryffindor needed a miracle at the end because they got some questions wrong. Interesting thing, like, um, for example, the question that Gryffindor got wrong about who Hagrid took over for. Um, he, the thing about it is, except for the questions posed only to the house and then the golden snitch round. There's no timer on those questions. Now, Helen Mirren would say, okay, we need an answer now. But I mean, they would have a long time. As a matter of fact, they encourage those contestants to talk out and think out loud what they were thinking. Like they wanted as much footage as they could of them talking about and, um, and thinking about how they're arriving at their answer. So the more, the better. And for her to go, this is my favorite movie, it's this. And then for it to be wrong, as a matter of fact, I believe um, of the four choices, that was the only one that was not a Hogwarts professor. So I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Um, I do know, and this is in defense of all of, all of them. Um, they are all amazing people. They all did an amazing job, represented their houses. The stress of that situation to want to win for your house in that moment, to want to know that you're being on TV and then the entire world's going to see this. I I can't imagine how hard that would be. It's a whole lot easier sitting at home playing, going, well, it's this, um, than it is standing up there with all those fans behind you who are just like you that are like, I could be doing this. Um, and then knowing, hey, social media is going to go crazy over some of these wrong answers. Like that stress has got to be really, really difficult for these people, especially that one girl who's only 15. Um, the minors really had it tough in this because they were required to take breaks so often and they had to have a parent there with them. And so and she had to go. She still had to go do school during this. Um, we actually had a day off in between filming. So episodes one and two were one day of filming. And then episodes three and then the final next week were another day of filming. But in between, there was a day off. Um, but she still had to be like going to school with them at the studio and all sorts of things. So uh, even more stress for the young girl. Um, so I do feel like they all did an amazing job, even though I feel like maybe there was a few questions um, that they could have gotten right. Maybe if they'd slowed down and thought it out a little bit. Um, but this round for sure, questions did seem to be more difficult. There was a couple of times I was like, it's this. Like, I know for a fact it's this. And then the question, the answer would come up and I'd be wrong. Um, the last word was one of those. Before they even put the four choices up on the screen, I go, it's stroke. And then stroke was the first choice. And I was like, there it is, it's stroke. And then they were like, every letter. And I was like, I need to reread this book. Um, so uh, there was definitely, and I, I believe on that one, both houses both also picked stroke. Um, so um, not a whole lot of book questions in this one. Obviously that one was a book question. There was another one posed to one of the houses that was a book question. I believe there was one more book question. And then there was one, Fantastic Beast question of him looking at um, the leader of the um, 
anti-witch movement as explained to Jillian, which I found fantastic. Um, I'm sure she has seen the Fantastic Beast movies, but it's a lot harder to be an expert on those because those have not been as well received in the Harry Potter community and people haven't watched them a hundred times. Although I feel like with some of the things coming up and uh, one of our favorite things to do in line while waiting in line was to talk not only to quiz each other because we did a lot of that and asked way harder questions than ever showed up on the show, um, which is funny because um, one of the Ravenclaw team members told me that they way overstudied, um, that they were studying things way harder than the show ever asked, um, which I'm hoping to have him on with me next week. And we're going to do a little talky talk about some of the things um, for the final, but um we, as the audience, were asking each other way harder questions uh, than they were asking. Um, some really, really difficult questions. But the other favorite thing to do in life was to talk fan theories and discussions about um, things that haven't been completely dissolved or this upcoming movie, Secrets of Dumbledore. And some really great, interesting theories out there. But uh, a way to pass the time while we were waiting outside. Uh, so it's cool to see some of the Fantastic Beasts questions show up that's the second one now i will say um it definitely seems like both of the audiences struggled um i do think the slytherin house was the least populated house of actual fans um i do wish that they were showing us the percentages because i have no idea on this one i do know in ours mostly um like the great lady ravenclaw got 100 percent on that and that's how we knew um, that the seat fillers did not have working devices because one of the seat fillers told us, hey, I, I didn't pick the gray lady, and it showed us that we got 100%. Um, and there's one in the final that I will talk about, um, but I'm not going to give any spoilers yet. Um, so I do wish that they were showing us the percentages on the questions that aren't the Golden Snitch ones because nobody knows on the Golden Snitch except for the producers. Um, but... I do wish that they were showing us those so we could see like maybe like how close the houses were on some of those ones that they got wrong. Um, because I was blown away by uh, not only how many questions the house for Slytherin got wrong last week and this week, but how many questions Gryffindor House, who did pretty well in the first week, um, got wrong in this one. For them to get only three in that golden snitch round, that's... And it was a hard round. Like, don't get me wrong. It was a hard round. Um, but as a household for them to get three right and three wrong. That's um, not a very good night for them. Um, all in all, I thought it was a fantastic episode. Um, one thing I did notice, like they showed Tom Riddle's diary and I don't know if that was the real one or not. Um, those things that they keep showing every episode as a lead in, um, they show a, one, a different one each episode. Um, I have no idea if they're real or not. We could not see those things. I had no idea that they were there. Um, from our seats and the audience, it was really hard to see most of the stuff. We could see the video board really well. Um, and there's actually, and you can't see it on the screen, but there's actually like a little strip at the bottom of that video board thing um, where like they're running everything from. And they could look out and see all of us and we could vaguely see like people moving around back there uh, but you can't see it at all on the show all in all though i felt like it was a really good episode i definitely feel like it had more challenging questions which a lot of people have been asking for i'm not sure why this episode seems so much more challenging than the last two um but it did congrats slytherin um, one big mistake that I noticed on my broadcast, and I don't know that it was on every broadcast. If you're watching on Cartoon Network, it may not have happened at all. Um, I'm watching on TBS and I'm watching very specifically on Hulu Live on TBS. And, um, before they came back from the last break, in that last break before they came back and kind of finished everything, um, they definitely showed the promo for next week, which showed that Slytherin was in the final, which told you Gryffindor's going to lose this here when we come back from break. That I felt like was a huge mistake that they should not have done. Um, should have known that that needed to wait till the break after that um, in between re-showing the episode. Um, so that was a huge mistake by TBS, at least on my broadcast. If you didn't see it, congrats. I know a lot of people did. 
Um, I felt like that that was a big mistake uh, by TBS's on TBS's part. Um, but other than that, good episode. Uh, I kind of feel sorry for the Gryffindors, um, but I also kind of don't because they also kind of felt like that this was their game to lose. Um, one thing I did want to say, and my son brought this up to me, who is in a lot of episodes with me, he goes, well, this was awfully convenient having Gryffindor versus Slytherin. Um, I would say that the game 100% is not rigged. Um, we, as a group of audience people, have had a lot of theories about different things, but uh, if they wanted it to be Gryffindor versus Slytherin, then it would have been in the final, not in this wild card game where one of them's going to get eliminated and no longer playing. And if there was a team that was not going to get eliminated, it was going to be Gryffindor. And so the fact that they did, and they did in the wild card against Slytherin, I mean, that you just can't plan that. Um, so to me, that, that shows that this um, was not rigged. It was an actual game show. Um, we'll see next week if we have anything fun or exciting happen. Uh, I look forward to the final. And thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this with your friends, please. Um, I know I hopefully have answered a lot of questions that people had, especially about last week's episode. I saw a lot of things. Um, so please share it. Let everyone know, Hey, there's this guy. He was there. He's got all these cool stories. Um, he knows a lot of the things that are going on. Go catch up on it. And thanks for watching guys. And until next time, happy building.